Jason Sahara. Welcome to uh, episode five of Know the Player. Thanks for uh, agreeing to let me interview you. Sure. I heard your name for years without actually putting a face to it. Um, your name kept coming up all the time. Jason uh, Sahara, Jason Sahara, Jason Sahara did this, Jason Sahara did that. I knew your home course was kind of like, you know, Taylor Park. Uh, and I remember you actually were trying to get me into the putting wars thing. You kind of ran that, right? Well, originally it was, I, I thought of the idea a long time ago. I saw what they were doing up in North Carolina and then uh, Gary Volts and uh, Cody Larson reached out to me a couple years ago, or, or I reached out to them, however it was. And together we kind of pulled it together and, uh, and then we did it again last year, same place, Arcane Ale Works. Awesome yeah. I really wanted to do that. It just was the place and the time just wasn't right for me. But I looked at the pictures and stuff from it, and I was like trying to find you because I always wanted to put a face with your name. And uh, I have to admit that this really strange thing happened that I couldn't recognize you because that little profile picture that you have on Facebook, you know, that you see in the little circle, you look just like my 10th grade algebra teacher who also was my high school golf coach. And he was like six, four, or five. So I kept on looking for somebody that was really tall. tall. Yep. And I, I guess that's why I kept missing you. But you know, I finally uh, I finally put your face to your name and um, now I know you, finally. And you're in the league this year. Yeah. Finally, I heard rumors for a long time that you know you wanted to uh, yeah, get into the Followed it the last couple of years. Looked like you guys had a, all kinds of fun. and. It's always a, a matter of making enough time, you know, but uh, I kind of made sure to do that now, Wednesdays this year. Now, now you're an artist. Um, of course, that's something that somebody is before they actually, you know, I mean, you make your living doing that. I see from your profile on Facebook that you've got your own LLC mm -hmm. and you're the uh, art director at, um, what, what is it, Alp? Sahara Creative Group. Yeah, and, but but you're the also art. my biggest client where I worked for the last 15 years. Outpost Communications is another. Right, right. So, um, is it true that uh, artists are temperamental, and that's where they get some of their inspiration? You know, Picasso once said, "We're all born artists. It's just too bad we grow up." So, <laughs> that's maybe I just refuse to grow up. That's a good quote. Well, tell us about some of the the projects you've done, especially those that are related to disc golf. Um, I remember you told me not too long ago that Kenny Climo actually reached out to you to uh, do some things for him. Uh, the Cypress Point uh, tea signs uh -huh. when that was first going in. What all goes into like making those tea signs? I mean, what do you actually have got to do uh, to make one of those? Uh, I probably take it too far. I make it into way more work than it probably should be. <laughs> um, you know, because general golf course tea signs you know they're very architectural and simple but I make them fun and you know I try to incorporate in some sort of a theme and uh, Cypress Point was obviously the airport and airplanes and you know, the design of it kind of looks like a little bit of a fuselage and you can see some wing shapes and that sort of thing even if it's subliminal um, Taylor Park that was the first one set I did um, actually what goes into them is is uh, you know, there's Google Earth, kind of get an idea, and you can see a lot of stuff. You'd be surprised what you can see looking straight down, especially paths, lakes, even a couple baskets or pads here or there. But then you have to kind of walk through hole by hole. I take pictures. I start at the tee pad, and I walk a little bit, start, and, you know, lots of pictures, and that, and I even take notes. You know, this is a pine tree, this is a, you know, palm tree, or what have you. And... You know, usually the first one, I'll design the first one, get it approved by whoever's employing me to do it. And it, it's time consuming. It's very time consuming so, to get it just right. So the champ, Kenny, reached out to you to do the ones at Cypress Point Park, right? I kind of threw Charlie Goodpaster. Charlie knew that I did graphic design. Uh -huh. I had already done Taylor at this point. Uh -huh. And then later on you did Maximo too. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, USF, Riverfront, uh -huh. 
that was the third one I did. The last one I did was. Nice. And a lot of people reach out to you uh, to do um, logos for tournaments and stuff yep. like that, right? Yep. So that's 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 uh, all pretty awesome. We've all seen your artwork everywhere. Thank um, you. Let's get into um, how you started playing disc golf and uh, when you started playing. I think you told me way back in 2005, so you're like a 14 year old, uh, year old player now. It doesn't seem like it at all. Um, 05, 06, somewhere in there. Uh, friends of mine got me hooked, and coincidentally, none of those people play anymore. And I approached this small group of guys at Taylor Park, they called themselves the Sand Slugs. I think yeah. there was 12 or 15 of them at the time. Uh, and uh, Very inviting, fun guys, and uh, just laid back and, you know, it's not, obviously, it's not like tournament play. <laughs> and, yeah, I think Mark Bailey told me we have over 1,200 established handicaps in our group now. Wow. That's, obviously, we have the big ace races and one, one or two records. But, yeah, it really uh, took off. Three divisions, obviously, in, in uh, handicaps. So, so you're from St. Pete, and you kind of like started playing there at Maximo with the uh, Sand Slugs. Actually, the very first place uh -huh. was Taylor. Oh, was Taylor? Yeah. And Taylor is, became kind of your home course, right? Mm -hmm. I've already edited two videos with you playing in them, and I get you know, when you edit videos and you have to do all the cuts and everything, you start to get very familiar with people's styles. Um, and you got, there's not a lot of cutting going on with you, because you basically, whether it's a drive or a putt, you know, you're stepping up and you're, you're going. So, really. Before I, you know, yeah, they, do it before you have a chance to think about it. Right. I notice that you've got a very unique style, um, kind of ruggedly individual, you know, kind of like, um, Unorthodox. Well, well, across the board. <laughs> I, yeah, maybe a little unorthodox, but I think it's your personality. You know, uh, I mean, being an artist and being creative and everything. Um, I actually kind of envy it a little bit, you know, because uh, I started playing when I was 58, and I said, "Man, I got to jump start this thing." So I started listening to what everybody told me. I was very teachable, and I wanted to do everything right, and. That helped me to a degree, but I think it hurt me equally. I kind of wish that I would have just kind of developed my own style uh, to, to a, what is natural for you. Yeah, to a greater degree, um, and just let my body kind of do what it knows it needs to do. And that's kind of what I sense the way you play, um, particularly with that. I, I'm going to call it a turbo putt to start here, um, which you don't call it a turbo putt, do you? Uh, it's the closest thing, obviously. I mean, but you just started doing that because you just went out there and you were like, you know, how do I get the, the disc in the basket from this short distance? And you, you decided this was the best way to do it, right? Well, self-taught in my backyard, trying, you know, I didn't want to go out there and embarrass myself. And I kept missing my, well, at the time, one of these. Uh -huh. <laughs> the chair was my target. Missed it. Hit my... Uh, pole building and just echo through the neighborhood and you know cringe every time like there's got to be a way just to keep it in front of me mm -hmm. how can I just keep it in front of me and ignorance is bliss there I mean if you talk to a pro they would never probably recommend anything like that um, they tell you where to aim and you know how to hold it and release and, but uh, like I said I just kind of developed it in my backyard and you know the backyard's only so big and then I after a while I'm like I'm test this out and see how far I can make it go like that. I've, I've made putts upwards of 100 feet. Yeah, I, it's amazing how you, how you throw those. Um, I, I, believe it or not, I think I used to be better at it a few years back when uh, before I developed, started developing the rest of my game. Because that's all I had back then. <laughs> so, so you don't consider it a turbo putt, though. I mean, it, it's kind of your own creation. You say it's more of a, of a push. Kind of. Oh, it's, it's, it's all this like, finger. You know, the yeah, other finger is kind of Explain how it. you do that. I think if I'm if I'm correct, a turbo putt, your fingers are on the outside of the disc and you twist your wrist. Uh-huh. Right? I push through it. Almost like and shooting a basketball just, what, free throw or something. You're just using the one finger to push through the it? The one finger, it's off center and it creates and pushing through it, if everything works correctly, it, it gives it a nice spin and that's what makes you know like rifle. Yeah. And, and it it, it obviously is working correctly because I see like 
very little to no wobble on any of those uh, uh, putts that you throw. Keep watching. And you're good at it too. There are some things that you do intrinsically, uh, at least I think they're intrinsic, that, you know, you, you stand up, you know, when you're going to a putt, you walk over, you stand up, you look at the basket, you take a breath, and then as you're letting that breath out, you just go. <laughs> I, I do, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's no warm-ups. Um, yeah, I just, I, I see it and literally throw before I have a chance to think about it. You think about it and then you talk yourself into, well, you got a little bit of headwind here, you know, put it at an angle. Oh, well, you right. got some tailwind, you know, aim high. Right. Um, and then you hit high and then you're mad because you hit exactly where you aimed. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you misjudge due to the wind or whatever. So I, I especially coach man, or, you know, some of these more protective courses, that wind doesn't doesn't affect me that much. And I, I just yeah, see the target. You're getting that great spin on it. Although one of my worst habits, worst bad habits though, is actually forgetting to aim. And then it hits exactly where I was looking and I'm like, oh, <laughs> too late then, you know, <laughs> too late then. The, these baskets out here at Cliff, uh, that band at the top is my nemesis because I subconsciously aim at it. I swear, I hit it an awful lot. So, um, I know you 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 won how many matches now through four weeks? Uh, three. Three. So you're three and one. Three and one. <laughs> who, who did you lose to? Willie Montez got me by one stroke at his home course. Who are you playing tonight? Phil McDonald. Um, well, he's a highly rated player. Yeah, especially, to the numbers. especially a coachman. Good luck in that match. What, what, what's your thoughts going into it? Uh, go for pars and try not to make mistakes. Yeah, that seems to be what Clip is all about. You know, just don't get yourself in trouble. Um, pick up an occasional birdie, um, but mostly... Just, As they come, yeah. Yeah, try not to Hopefully get... Hopefully they can steal one or two from 60 feet away. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for uh, the interview, and um, good luck tonight. Well, thank you. I think I might need it. Uh, it's going to be a good one with gold. Yeah, gold and green. The, the wolves are out for blood. So, If everything goes the way it, 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 it did the first half of the season, in the second half, uh, this is a preview of the finals. Well, good luck, and thank you for the interview. Thank you.